Hey guys, subscribe for daily knife content. And if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for links to some great online retailers. There's also individual links for knives that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got a very special knife overview slash show and tell uh, to share with you guys. This is the beautiful and incredible Shirogorov knives and RJ Martin Russian overkill. Now, before we get started, I know, you know, some people know about this knife, some people don't. So I don't want to, you know, <laughs> make some people sit around to hear the price and hear availability. I'm going to tell you guys this right off the bat. Number one, uh, this is, uh, this was a very special limited collaboration. There were only 200 of these. Um, there was a lottery, which means you had to enter the lottery just to be able to buy it. Uh, and they are all gone. Uh, apparently this occurred on Recon 1, which I've learned here recently thanks to Levon from the Knife Dance podcast, is uh, the U.S. Uh, distributor for Shirogorov knives and is a great place. If you're trying to hunt down a Shirogorov, is a great place to check out. I have no affiliate program with them, uh, so I don't make anything from that. I'm just telling you that's what I've heard. Um, I myself am actually trying to hunt down a Shirogorov and will probably buy from them, so that's pretty cool. Um, but uh, yeah, this is... There are lots of different tiers of Shirograf knives. They have the production uh, knives, they have their um, custom division knives, and they have their full custom knives uh, that are, uh, you know, legitimate. They're way, way, way more expensive, full custom. These are basically ultra, you know, high-end production. This is like a special uh, project where they did just, like a limited run project where they did a few. Um, RJ uh, Martin, legendary knife designer. I actually became familiar with him through some of the Zero Tolerance collaborations. A lot of you guys will remember some of those knives that he did. Very distinct lines. Um, it's... I, I mean, even though we have like a really straight profile here, some people might reduce it to a simple profile. To me, it's much easier to spot an RJM versus other knives that have a similar sort of straight knife profile. It's very distinct to me. It may not be for everybody. So anyways, these are gone. These are completely gone. Um, and uh, they were very, very expensive. If you're familiar with Shirogorov knives, this probably won't come as a shock to you. For many people, it will come as a shock. Um, these are on a completely and totally different level than, uh, you know, some of the um, production uh, titanium frame lock flippers that we've come to know through Wii Knives, Best Deck, ZT, right, even your Riot. Uh, this is above your uh, Hinderer Knives, your... Um, uh, your uh, uh, Demco knives, your Chris Reeve knives, this is definitely above that. I've handled all that stuff. It's great. I love it. But, you know, is, is this higher up? 100%. Um, so these originally apparently came in at something like $1,500 to $1,600. Uh, and then some other retailers got a hold of them, probably entered the lottery. And so you'll be able to go find old listings. They'll be sold out. But old listings at other retailers where they had them listed at $2,200 or $2,300. Rest assured that these on the secondary market will likely go for much more than that. That is all the information I can give you on pricing, right? Now, I know there's always going to be somebody in the comment section going, who would ever spend that much? Save it. They're gone. So many people wanted to buy this that, you know, they had to do a lottery just to be able to buy it. They are gone. You don't need to worry about it. Uh, I'm not getting anything from this video other than a chance to check out something that is a beautiful part of knife history. And I'm really, really impressed with Shirogorov knives to the point that, you know, they're one of the only companies out there that I'm, you know, would consider spending over a thousand dollars with, having handled lots of things in the multi hundred dollar department. Um, you know, I'm a little hesitant when we get up there, and uh, so yeah, just so you guys know, that's they're, they're one of the only companies aside from like Sharp by Design that I would truly consider spending that much money with uh, to own, you know, one of their one of their knives. So yeah, now I will admit this is a little bit out of my comfort zone, like just in terms of my experience and knowledge. I'm not going to pretend for a second that I can give you guys every last little comprehensive detail when it comes to something like this, which is why I don't. I know you guys are seeing that mirror edge. <laughs> that's my hand reflecting in the mirror edge. <laughs> A lot of impressive details here. I don't know that I'm qualified to bring you every last little thing, but I am going to give you guys some pretty cool eye candy. T take a look at this. This is not a review. I'm not going to attempt to review this knife, and it would be pointless considering it's basically unavailable and incredibly expensive. Uh, thank you so much to Sierra underscore bound on Instagram. He has one of the most beautiful collections I've ever seen, and here lately has been providing some excellent, 
excellent, very interesting knives for the channel. And so thanks to him, I'm able to bring you guys this. Make sure you give him a follow. Thanks so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. There's a link for my Patreon right down in the description. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. We're going to get a few specs here real quick. Um, I'm going to try and be really careful because uh, this is, I know I've got gross fingerprints on it, but this is somebody else's totally pristine knife and I'm not going to put a mark on it or anything like that. So the overall length is about 8.9 inches overall. It's amazing. This thing, the presence of this knife is one of a smaller, much more carryable knife, but it's just amazing to me. This comes in at almost nine inches. Blade length is, that's like right on four inches. Uh, and then your cutting edge is coming in at about 3.8, something like that. I'm gonna do a couple of size comparisons here, just a couple so we can move into the main discussion up against the Ontario Rat uh, Model 1. And how about the Spyderco Para 3? I think that'll probably do it for most people. We don't need to do all of them. Um, so there you go. This is a big knife, but because of the profile and the way that this was all put together, it really doesn't feel all that massive. Um, I would normally do a measurement of blade stock thickness, but truthfully, I'm just, I don't want to touch the blade. Again, this, I know people, that makes people roll their eyes. This isn't mine. It's very expensive. I'm just not going to risk putting a mark on it. Um, the, uh, blade stock thickness is about 155 thousandths, if I remember correctly. Um, I will weigh it for you guys and I'll show you guys the inside. We will talk about that action. Believe me. Oh my gosh, this flashlight is just on the fritz. Uh, yeah, there is milling on the inside, reducing the weight a bit. Um, so that's cool. And that's the case with a lot of Shirogoff knives. I think most of them now. Weight on the Russian Overkill. 4.76 ounces. Uh, if you're, you know, big into ratios, that's a little over the whole ounce and inch thing. Honestly, I just don't really care. That's totally within, like if I were in some crazy alternate universe where I was able to buy this and was brave enough to carry it, right? Let's say I was a freaking millionaire. Um, then uh, yeah, I, this wouldn't bother me at all. In fact, the profile uh, seems to be uh, one that would, you know, create uh, for extreme comfort. And I have handled some other RJM uh, collaboration knives that uh, were, I guess, fairly similar in profile, and yeah, they carry well. So I'm gonna, I guess, that's not gonna be super helpful for everybody, but yeah, that we're, we're just gonna go with that. Hardware check, not gonna do that, even if the hardware was not proprietary, but it's kind of flathead-ish. There is a specific tool, and you can see here we've got um, these pieces on the other side that will also require their own specific tool. I would imagine there is a tool, if you have one of these and you're like, how do I take it apart? You, you, actually, if you have one of these, you probably already know, right? I don't know if that information is super beneficial to everybody. And frankly, I just don't care. <laughs> if this were mine, there's no way that I would try to take it apart. Um, I will give you guys a look at the thickness up against like a Spyderco Para 3. You can see here the knife is not all that thick. It's not thick at all. It's just ever so slightly thicker than the Spyderco Para 3. Um, let's put it up, uh, length and height up against the PM2 in pair of three. So you can see here, uh, with the flipper tab, it is fairly tall. There's quite a bit sticking out there with the flipper tab. Uh, overall length, it's looks to be very, very similar to the, uh, Spyderco PM2. So not crazy. Nothing that I would be like, oh my gosh, I can't carry it right. As per usual, this is a long blade, so if you are looking to hunt one of these down, just be cognizant of your local laws. It's definitely going to be illegal for some people. Um, so anyways, um, it's impossible to for this to translate. Like, what this is, is titanium and M398 steel, which, yes, is new and different from M390. If you're interested in M398, I'm going to talk about it a little bit, but I, I can't give you all the science behind it. Laren Thomas at Knife Steel Nerds is an absolute godsend to the knife community. If you want to learn about knife steel, the best place to go is Knife Steel Nerds. Uh, he's got a great article on this, and I would recommend checking it out. Absolutely. It's not possible for me for this to translate through this electronic window that you're looking at. But uh, I've handled a few Shear Grow Off knives, and I've never been disappointed. In fact, I remember, um, you know, early on in my whole knife enthusiast journey, uh, hearing about Shear Grow Off and how they're expensive, they're hard to get, but it's just masterful machine work. And I was intrigued by the line. Shear Grow Off knives always, always have really clean, very luxury, modern lines, right? 
And when they do collaborations, they kind of, it seems like they intentionally do collaborations with makers that, where that's going to translate well to their, their image, I guess. That's my perspective. This is no exception, obviously, but I was thinking, man, I mean, that's cool, but it's, you know, I, I was seeing a lot of like, I was seeing back then, this is a while ago, I was seeing S30V, I was seeing LMAX, M390, S90V, right? I was like, that's cool. Those are steels that we see at a lower price point. And then they're using titanium and some carbon fiber. Okay, those are materials that we see at a lower price point. It's a lot of the same type of stuff that I always say. Those are materials that you can get at a lower price point. Uh, does it take the same form and does it feel the same? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Anybody who has handled a Shugaroff or who owns one right now, please feel free to back me up in the comments section. These are on a totally different plane of existence. The moment you pick one of these up, right, any Shugaroff, the moment you pick it up and flip it, no matter how reserved you are in believing that, you know, any knife can be worth that much, one thing is for certain. It's it's almost like a little lightning bolt going off in your brain and you go, oh, 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 okay, this is different. This is not the same thing. Shurgoroff knives are known for masterful machine work. And again, you know, even though we are, I am finally bringing you guys content uh, in 1440, for those of you who have devices that are capable of that, um, you can see a lot of this beautiful detail, this beautiful machine work up close, right? This beautiful finish work. I mean... Even the finishes on the titanium and the steel are, are different than what we see. There is a lot more work that goes into something like this. The tolerances are beyond comprehension. This does not feel like it was made by, you know, not only a human being in this universe, it doesn't feel like it was made by mach machines that exist in this universe. Th this feels like something that was pulled from another dimension. Uh, and it was created, you know, using some totally unknown process, right? I, that's the best way I can describe it. It is just absolutely off the charts. Every, every last little detail of this, you know, including like the action, which by the way, this is running on roller bearings. Very, I mean, there's no detection in the internal. I, I can't, there's no part of me that can even begin to feel like I, I can, you know, feel anything going on inside the pivot. We're in an angle here, guys. So this is completely and totally fall shut. Keeping the blade away from the camera and, and uh, at the same time, you know, up far enough from the surface, so I'm not bumping into that and, and demonstrating that fall shut in us, right? Um, yeah, it's very controlled though. That is my favorite type of action. Uh, I don't judge quality on, you know, does it fall shut, right? Is it like a guillotine? No, I like fall shut action um, where there, you know, the surfaces on the inside are obviously so smooth that you can't feel like if I were holding the blade and somebody was moving the handle or vice versa, if I had my eyes closed, could I feel any inconsistencies? No, you know, that's the case here. That's kind of what I look for, but I like it when it's super controlled. So the thing does not come down on my finger. And I also think it's an example of just how much attention is paid uh, to something like this. They are obviously going for a very specific type of experience on disengagement and on deployment, right? Speaking of deployment, oh my goodness. The detent is perfection. It's absolute perfection. I know this can be frustrating for people who have watched some of my other content and they, they've heard me freak out about, you know, some of the, you know, knives that I time, like the action is just unreal. A lot of times, you know, Sharp by Design comes up um, and a Shirogorov definitely comes up, but when it comes to action, uh, truthfully, I've never, when we're talking about titanium frame lock flippers on bearings, right? In this case, again, this is roller bearings. It's a little bit different. Um, when it comes to action, I truly have never felt anything, um, that approaches Shirogorov or Sharp by Design. And this is the exact same thing that I'm getting. The break is very crisp, very distinct. The flipper tab is shaped in a way that it's comfortable. I mean, I could flip this all day, Right. Pull down, fire, and it has that every time. Every single time that blade is going to deploy perfectly. And it's just one of those things where it's you just have to experience it. And not everybody has the luxury of experience. In fact, the only reason that I get to experience some of this stuff is because people are willing to send it to me. And by the way, this will go back. This was not donated to the channel, right? I'm not saying nice things because I got a free knife. No, there's no incentive for me to do this. There's I'm not trying to sell it. I'm not trying to, you know, the, the person who sent it to me is not trying to give it to me. No, I'm just experiencing it and telling you guys what I'm feeling. This is absolute top tier action. Uh, I would say this is within the top five 
best actions I've ever felt on a knife. It's just, and, and they're all up there in like absolute perfection. There's just nothing that I would change here. Very, very cool. I love the pivot. I love how they've done this lip. You can see there, it's been lipped and then the texturing comes up around the lip and then it's actually seated straight because the uh, this area down here actually drops. There's a bevel down to this area right here, which is nicely chamfered and rounded down. Every last corner of this, every last little tiny area of this knife was taken under consideration. And th this is what I talk about when we talk about master machine work. Look at these little details in here beside the backspacer and the backspacer itself, right? This jimping up here, functional but not aggressive. Areas up on the corner of the blade, all nicely knocked down. Look at this beautiful, obviously hand rubbed satin finish on the um, the flats here. And then this really cool, I don't know if it's vapor blasted or how they do that, it's just amazing. Absolutely mirror polished, uh, mirror polished edge. And believe me when I say that this is a laser beam. Uh, that is definitely something that is going to, I don't need to try and cut with that to decide whether or not that's gonna be a, an efficient cutter. Another little detail I like here is how they've done the area for the lock bar insert. The screw's on the inside, and then they have polished and made that uh, that screw head flush with this area that's raised so that it can seat the uh, lock bar insert. <laughs> it's just beautiful. Area underneath the pocket clip carved out to make room for the pocket clip itself, and I would imagine just hold it maybe tighter up against your pants. And then they have, I'm gonna close this real quick so I don't cut myself. Uh, this uh, pocket clip has been seated into an area of the frame that's been sort of carved out, and then there are hidden screws underneath. Elements that we certainly see in other knives, right? But it just, again, it just doesn't take this masterful form. There's just nothing quite like a Shiro Goroff. They have a nice large lanyard hole that is not uh, being prioritized over the clip, and the clip allows the knife to carry like this. The centering is laser perfect. I mean, yeah, they've even, you know, when when they take a risk like this, where they make this sort of U-shape or V-shape there with the backspacer, it's almost like, because if the, if the blade is off-center and you have a backspacer that comes to a U or V-shape, it highlights that centering. So if the blade is off, you'll see it much easier than if the it's just the two pieces of the frame coming together and the backspacer is not present and there's standoffs, right? This is like daring someone to, <laughs> to uh, you know, suggest that the blade is off center. They are so perfect. They get it right down the middle of that V. It's just unbelievable. A testament to, I mean, just how perfect. Sure, I've never handled a Shiro Groff knife that wasn't perfect in every single aspect. This is some of the greatest machining. And again, coming from somebody with a limited perspective, as many knives as I've handled and experienced, right? I'm still limited when it comes to knives that cost over a thousand dollars. That's oftentimes why you guys don't see a lot because I I'm not going to pretend to to be able to understand all of this. There's there's so much more that goes into something like this than I'm able to bring you guys and describe. But it is amazing. It is something that's you know it's just a, a sight to behold. It's a thing to experience, right? Not everybody values stuff like this, but if you're watching this video right now, you were intrigued enough to click on it, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, bear logo, I think it looks great. Some people like it, some people don't. Whatever, it is what it is. Uh, Shurgroff obviously doesn't have an issue <laughs> selling their knives. <laughs> this is a this is a brand that has been hailed for so long. You know, they, they're they're so well known in the knife world for just being like the masters of precision work. They're just not having an issue, right? They're gonna do what they're gonna do, and their knives are definitely gonna sell. RJM on the other side, RJ Martin. Um, you can see the uh, initials there. None of that bothers me. The blade is just absolutely beautiful. The ergonomic lines are absolutely beautiful. It's just, I mean, again, in a hypothetical circumstance where you're actually going to use it. M398 steel. What, what is that? Brief, uh, my understanding of it. Again, go to, um, Knife Steel Nerds. Laren Thomas, who's an actual metallurgist and can provide more scientific detail on knife steel than probably almost any other source on the internet. That's that's where I go, and we should be very thankful that Laren Thomas exists. <laughs> oh man, M398, uh, we're talking about an evolution in some ways of M390. 
Uh, you will not see the steel right now on a lot of other things, right? But uh, M398 has substantially higher edge retention than M390, which is incredible because M390 has very good edge retention. Uh, what type of edge retention? From what I understand, it approaches S125V. Holy crap. That's wild. Uh, it does sacrifice toughness. So if you're going to go after this and you're thinking, I'm going to get it and I'm going to use it, right? I'm going to go in the secondary and pay $3,000 for this thing. I'm not saying that's what it'll cost, but yeah, let's say you do that and then you want to use it, right? First off, wow. I mean, I applaud your bravery. Uh, not a tough steel, not something you're going to want to go banging around on, anything like that. And I know a lot of people think, for that much money, it should be able to do anything. And the amount of money that you spend on an object like this does not, it doesn't, you know, it's not like the more money you spend, the, the tougher it should be, right? I mean, a lot of times, you know, the money goes into, in this case, the precision work, the total amount of work it takes to bring this object into reality, right? Um, and uh, performance of the blade, you know, depending on what you're going to use it for, some people value different aspects of composition. In this case, we have incredible edge retention. So lots of, you know, the ability to cut continuously into, you know, probably light to medium materials uh, for an incredible amount of time, right? Not trying to chop a concrete block in half or anything like that. Use a cold steel for that or use a hammer or use a more appropriate tool because a knife is a, is a ridiculous object to use for something like that. So therefore the example holds no water. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I'm just arguing with myself. But um, M398, yeah, incredible levels of edge retention. I think there's a slight drop in corrosion resistance to M390, but it's still very, very stainless and then not tough. Is it going to be hard to sharpen? Yeah, I would imagine so. I would imagine it would be an absolute nightmare. Um, most of these knives, you know, I'm sure there are one, at least one of the 200 people who owns these knives is probably taking it out and using it, right? I think a lot of these will end up just being, you know, relics, uh, collector items. You know, that's just what it is. Is it capable of being used? Yes, of course it is. Uh, this is a titanium frame lock, right, with a functional geometry. It was absolutely made if somebody wanted to, to, to be used, but what people will do with it, which is their own business because they bought it, right? That's entirely up to them. Very impressive though. It's, it's fun to, even though, I mean, on the outside, it looks like another steel blade. It is cool to check out M398. It actually is listed that way too, right? Yeah, right. Can we get it to reflect? There it is right there. M398. Very cool. We have the uh, stop pin back here, and I believe there is rounding. Yeah, that's going to round nicely around that stop pin. Very beautiful. This thing is wanting to fall shut readily, and I'm trying to be careful and hold it at an angle. That's an advantage, holding the, having the camera at an angle so that when we have really smooth knives like this, it doesn't drop down on my finger uh, in the middle of the video. I love the backspacer. In fact, this is one of those knives where... Um, I mean, maybe it's the effect of the knife. It's the presence of the knife. I mean, I'm an enthusiast. I get really worked up about stuff like this, right? But the presence of it might be, it might have me a little bit reserved on criticism. But truthfully, just looking at this, this is one of those knives where I really wouldn't change anything is about the design. There's nothing here where I'm thinking, boy, I'd like that to be different or I wish this looked different. No. Um, I'm not, I'll tell you this, I'm not the biggest fan of this sort of blue jeans anno on the pocket clip. I, I love uh, monochromatic looks, you know, so uh, grayscale monochromatic, right? So everything else in this knife is silver, uh, gray, you know, polished, right? It would have been cool to have uh, the pocket clip and the hardware and the backspacer all match, but it's in this um, blue anno and that looks great too. It's just not my favorite thing in the whole world. But again, the criticisms are meaningless. <laughs> It's not there. It's not like R.J. Martin and and um, uh, Shiro Goroff are sitting there going, "Gosh, what does he think?" So that we can do a better job of selling these next time. <laughs> no, no. Um, Fifteen to sixteen hundred dollars is quite a bit higher than um, you know, like your F ninety fives and your other Shiro Goroffs that are also production knives. But I do believe that this there is an extra little. There, there's a little extra here, right? I mean, they are working with a steel that is definitely going to be harder to grind, right? Um, uh, you know, you can put more or less work into an M390 or M390 blade and more or less work into the, um, the item and have it end up in different price tiers, right? So it's not like M398 has this static value no matter how much work goes into it. No, right? 
take a knife like this that's already, even if it was M390 or LMAX, it's already going to cost a lot of money because of all the extra work that goes into it. But then you, you know, you've got to polish these flats, get this ground out and get, put this mirror edge on it. Right. I mean, that's, that costs a lot of time and energy. Uh, you know, it, it costs a lot of money, uh, to do that on top of everything else that they've done here. So, it's pointless to argue about whether or not I think the price was worth it because it, number one, they're gone. Number two, uh, I'm kind of out of my field of expertise even talking about this knife, right? So it is what it is. Um, it was kind of, it was kind of crazy, but also kind of expected to see other retailers get it up really high, 22, 2300, but yeah, they're gone. Boy, this is beautiful. Um, so uh, this is um, going to go on my, no matter how you define these, I, I'm going to define this knife as a semi-custom because of, again, the amount of human attention that went into it, the amount of handwork on top of the machine work that went into it. It's also going to go on my favorite knives of all time playlist. Absolutely. This is easily one of the coolest knives that has ever come across this channel. I, I consider myself lucky just to have handled it. Right, I mean, this is this is not the type of knife that I can ever could ever hope to um, acquire for myself. I will say this though: very few knives have got me tempted to spend this much money. Let's say I was lucky enough to have my name in the uh, lottery to be able to buy this, right? And they said, "With sixteen hundred bucks, if you want it, it's yours. If not, it's going on to the next person." This is one of the only knives in existence I think I would I would fork over that money for, despite my hesitation with not totally understanding every last aspect of this. Yeah, um, these are the types of knives that if I was going to do that, I, I would. But I didn't get the chance. I <laughs> was never anywhere close to being able to to do that. So, um, but anyways. I, I hope I've brought you guys as much detail as you were hoping to get um, from this video. I hope you guys got to see every last angle. I'll kind of go over this again, showing it from the different sides, uh, close-ups and things, so that you guys can get a look at everything. There, it, it's truly flawless. You know, I mean, I've got my gross fingerprints all over it, but there is no L, no part. God, the edge is just perfect. <laughs> oh God, yeah. That's it. It's a little nerve wracking to handle something like this, not just because I mean, there's more expensive objects out there, but it's not like I could replace this, right? I can't I can't replace this. I can assure you that Sierra underscore bound is much less concerned with the value of the knife, you know, versus the knife itself. So, yeah, it is kind of nerve wracking handling stuff like this, but I I did want to bring this to you. Um, so, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this little it's just a little show and tell. Uh, this is fun for me to do, right? Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Make sure to follow Sierra underscore bound uh, on Instagram. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.